Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Um, this morning's talk is going to cover uh, analyzing intrusions and intruders. Uh, it's kind of a deeper look at you know, network and, uh, incident response, intrusion analysis. Um, Okay, so this presentation is significantly changed from the one on your CD, but I've already provided this to DEF CON last night, so uh, it'll be on the website after my talk sometime today, hopefully. Um, who am I? Uh, I'm Sean Bodmer. Uh, I'm a computer science, uh, criminal science researcher. I spent a lot of time uh, researching honey nets over the last six years. Um, I'm not an expert behavioral profiler, nor do I work for the Department of Justice or have any background uh, with them specifically. Um, intrusion analyst by trade. Uh, spent the first few years in doing penetration testing, exploit analysis, um, signature generation for IDSs, IPSs, and the last six years specifically dealing with instant response, intrusion analysis, and honey nets. Um, and I'm also building a thesis on attacker and a threat profiling. Um, why am I here? Uh, I'd like to convey some concepts and methods that you, know, you all can hopefully walk away with and uh, better uh, protect your networks and better understand threats uh, that are actively coming against your network. Um, so basically, uh, this whole talk is going to cover silence of the lamb meets silence of the ram, in a sense. Um, Okay, so everybody's challenged, right? How, how do you better understand the threats? You know, you get hacked, you have an incident occur in your network. How do you understand what, you know, what the motive and intent is? Um, you know, how can you take that information when you understand it and better uh, um, use, use that information to you know, put in stronger uh, protections in your network? How do you effectively communicate what just happened on your network to your leadership, you know, how are they going to give you more budget? How, how are they going to, you know, uh, allocate you more resources to, you know, for, for, uh, to increase in security protections or training? Um, uh, overall foundations uh, of, of this talk is going to basically be founded uh, in behavioral profiling. Yes, it has negative connotations in the uh, media and the press, uh, but it's been used for a very long time and very su successfully. You know, um, I think statistically uh, it's like 70, 72 percent on average behavioral profiling does work. It's not 100 percent, it's not the silver bullet, but it, it does work. Um, and you can use this to analyze patterns of, uh, of an attack, uh, focus on the behavior, um, the skills and abilities. Uh, you can look at the code that's being used uh, against your network and see if it's custom, if it's not. Um, motivation, you know, what are they going after, your you know, finance information, your logistics, uh, operational, is it corporate espionage, um, you know, complexity of the attack, how hard was it, you know, accessibility to the resources. Um, so this is kind of the foundation. I'm going to build on it from here. Okay, so I'm going to bring you all the way back about 100 years, a little bit over 100 years ago, uh, 1888, Jack the Ripper. This is where behavioral profiling started, right? So first case, profiling was, was actively used. Um, so uh, without even ever finding Jack the Ripper, they were able to build a list of you know, a profile of Jack, and there's still today, nobody really knows who, who he was, uh, but they have a lot, they can infer a lot of uh, personality traits about Jack the Ripper, right? So, um, you know, they have all his victims, you know, they have the dates, circumstances of death, and, you know, how they were found, how they were harmed, right? You can relate all this information to your, you know, your network. What happened? What OSs did they hit? What services? What tools were dropped? What files were altered? What was taken? What presence was left? Right. So you can, from an intrusion analyst perspective, you can take relate all this information that's already there to you know what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You know you can develop patterns and signatures of an attack. You know if you can write your own custom uh, signatures, networks or host-based signatures. Okay, so uh, with Jack the Ripper, they never found him, right? But they have a lot of uh, uh, suspects, right? They have all these plots, um, you know, the, the royal plot. They have, you know, he was a doctor, um, you know, he's all, how the, the bodies were mutilated. Some say he was, some say he wasn't. It's a still an ongoing debate. Um, Jack the Ripper's crimes were disorganized. So, you know, some of them thought that it, it was, you know, a passion, um, you know, uh, organization. Um, Knowledge of your environment. So, did he know the streets where he was, uh, you know, murdering, committing these crimes? You know, does your intruder who's hacking your network does he seem to know exactly where your systems are? Does he know wh where where your users are, where your files are stored, where your key assets are located? You know, if you have a very large enterprise. Um, also, is he extremely uh, uh, skilled with tools? You know, what kind of tools is he using? Stuff from open source or is he customizing his own tools? You know, that can help you build off that profile of Jack, right? 
Uh, this is this is kind of an uh, overall basic uh, profile of Jack. I mean, I pulled it from several different sources um, right here. Um, so you, you look at Jack and you see, okay, there's all these assumptions about Jack the Ripper. Well, you can make the same assumptions about your attacker, right? Try to narrow it down. And this all leads to trying to understand your threat. You know, are you dealing with some kids? Are you dealing with organized crime? Somebody who's, you know, a disgruntled employee or something even worse? Um, so, like I said, there's over 100 years of this ex experience right now that you can use as information security professionals. Uh, you can go on the internet and read. You can go buy books. You can, you know, research. You know, until your head turns blue. Um, experience that that information that's already been built, and you know the you know the Department of Justice folks, the law enforcement types. Uh, you all, this this is not new to you. You all been doing this for you know decades, well, over a century, and uh, so this is all for really for the these security guys, network guys, who don't really think about this stuff or haven't, and you know, you, where you can walk away and put this into your, uh, your program. So now that information systems are at a point where all the heavy lifting is done by your automated systems, your security systems, it leaves you time to do the heavy thinking, right? Well, you can implement that a little bit better with recursive learning, you know, whether it be AI, automatic signature generation, uh, managed security services groups, and on-site contractors, right? So there's different ways that you can kind of build up in certain areas to help take all the leverage, uh, all of your time, instead of worrying about all the logs, you can filter it all with, with different tools that are commercially available. All right, so you know, get a little scientific. Criminal investigative analysis, yep, you can go on Wiki, you can go on the internet and read all about it. That's not something that, that you specifically do, but it's a good resource that you can go read about and walk away with, right? Reviews, uh, you know, the basis of it is reviewing crimes from a behavioral uh, aspect, um, assessing the facts about what happened and interpreting what, uh, what, the, what the attacker did. Um, so what you see happen, if it's a very clean and organized attack, if it's very disorganized, it seems slightly opportunistic, then you know, you, it gives you two different types of profile threat, no threat profiles. Um, you know, uh, law enforcement, this is a pull off a law enforcement quote, you know, a person's basic behavior exhibited in a crime scene you know, is also present in their normal lives. You, know, you can infer that you know, any way you want to. Um, but it will help you determine, especially if you're working in commercial space, um, it gives you the ability to see what's going on in your attack and go back out and do research on your attacker. Sometimes in, you know, in code that you do, you know, if you reverse it, you go through the, um, the um, email addresses, IP addresses, you know, specific keywords that you can go back and find the hacker group website or something on the MySpace, uh, you know, somebody's MySpace account that has all their information on just by finding a keyword in the code, right? And that, that right there allows you to better understand who is coming at you. Um, Okay, so again, a little technical threat analysis, threat modeling. This has been around for several years. Um, you know, so it look, com uh, common components. You know, but you look at potential attacks, ways in, the threats of your network, uh, and the risk. Right. So if it says vulnerability, risk equals a threat. You know, whatever. Um, analysis. You sit there and look at um, what's going on in your network, what's the trending of what's happened, and then what you can do to countermeasure that, what kind of countermeasures you can implement in the future as stronger protections, um, and which lead to future preparations. Um, a common analysis approach, locate your you know, vulnerabilities, uh, classify possible attackers. So if you're running a bank you know, or financial system, who could possibly want to get into your network and take your information, what, whatever it may be? Um, identify the goals of an attacker, okay, so you know your valuables and then you say, okay, well these, these groups of people may want to get into my systems. Um, you, you look at your vulnerabilities and say, okay, these are the ways that they could get in and you try to safeguard those as much as you can. And then you know, create a, a resolution plan. If this happens, you know, I, I know to go look at these systems because I know these are my weak points, right? And everybody look, always looks at the users uh, as your weakest link. Um, so. You, you, people have looked at criminal science and people looked at computer science as like basically two separate worlds. And right now, um, I see a lot of uh, IT information security personnel that we, we work, I work with and I work for and consult to. They do a lot of post mortem analysis, right? Something happened and they respond to that. They're not actively looking right now and keeping on track and understanding what's going on. They wait for something to happen, they pull the hard drive, they, they review it, they go through their logs, but it's already happened. So there's no way to, to you know, how do you respond to that? Your data's already gone. You're, you're already toast. Um, 
So it is possible to, to be a little proactive about it and implement these other sciences into your security program um, to make you a little more proactive. So you're not always responding to something. You're actually doing something, so when something happens, you're you know, significantly more prepared. Um, behavioral profiling, yeah, negative connotation, but it, it can def define you know, one aspect of understanding your threats and understanding attackers um, that want to do you harm. Okay, so it's here, it's now. You know, my humble opinion, you know, everybody, at some level you have thought about this, like who wants to break into my network, who wants to do me harm, but there's really a lot of resources that you can go read about to help you better understand it. And I have an entire bookshelf full of criminal, um, several books on criminal uh, uh, profiling, criminal sciences, and uh, you know, case studies that has helped me relate a lot of intrusions that I've seen into, you know, well, from, from these you know, serial murders and criminal case studies, really how they found them, how they identified it, how they enumerated who did it, right? Attribution. Um, so you can create you know, models of this. You can create, go by programs to help build stronger models, depends on what kind of network or you, uh, enterprise you're working with. Um, and you can understand, if you understand that, you understand your threats, you can understand where you may be going this, where the attackers may be going, the latest threats, okay, you know, this new exploit just came out, okay, I have six servers that have this vulnerability, yeah, I can patch it, how fast can you patch it before they, they hit you? Um, and how much of a threat, uh, how large and strong is the threat, how fast are they going to respond to that zero day that just came out? Okay, so this, you can be Columbo now, you can sit here on your network and think about things that, uh, you know, when the power goes out and you're all alone, it'll keep you up at night. Um, so you, when you do an intrusion analysis, you can either guess about what happened, you can try to put pieces together and make a lot of assumptions, or you can really look at all the facts, bring all your data sources together, and try to really peel away the needles in the haystack and put them all together. Okay, you know, this pattern happened over the network. If you have some session-based monitoring tools, you can look at the session of what happened and kind of tie it all together and attribute this one attack to maybe this one attempt was the same person over here in these five other places, right? So you start to build this big story of what may have happened or what is happening uh, on your network. Okay, so here, this is a sample, um, you know, cybercrime investigation, you know, intrusion investigation. You know, so you assess the scene, you can collect your evidence, put all your data sources together, document, document, please. Um, analyze. Uh, what happened, you know, network forensics, host-based forensics, you know, reversing malicious code, whatever, uh, you, know, you know, whatever you like, uh, whatever tools you use. Uh, assessment, right? So you see what happened over the network, over the host, you put it all together, and then you basically try to build a profile, a threat profile, an attacker profile um, of, what, uh, of the intruder or the, or the group that just came at your network. And then you try to generate an intrusion report that has all this combined information in it and give it to your senior leadership to let them know how big of a threat just came at their network. Whether it was some kid just using some tool he downloaded or this is something serious or, you know, um, I need, you know, more tools, I need, you know, we need to call the police, get a lawyer, you know, get, you know, F, you know whoever involved um, to, to better uh, support what just happened, especially if you're a large financial institution. Okay, here's a sample investigative life uh, cycle. Um, I'm just going to run through really quick. All right. uh, so you have your incident, you know, awareness consultation, uh, right when the incident occurs. Preliminary analysis, you know, image acquisition recovery. Um, you do analysis on it. Um, preliminary and final report, and either you're going to go to prosecutable or non-prosecutable. Um, you know, even if you go prosecutable, you still have the bottom containment and prevention uh, for the future. Um, they still kind of go hand in hand. Um, and you know, if you end up in a prosecution, you know, you know, I swear to tell the truth, nothing but the truth, and you know, that's uh, entertaining in of itself. So, um, where do you start, right? So, an incident occurs, and you have all this data, right? So, we, we we've talked about how you can do, you know, um, you know, behavioral profiling and intruder analysis, but when it comes down to it, you have all of these components of technology that you have to wrap your head around. When something happens, where do I start, right? Do I look for, you know, the hard drive, do I look at the app, do I look at the network logs, the hard drives, what do I do first, right? So, and, the, and it's all around what just happened, the body of the crime. So, you, you, you have all this to go through, and it's very uh, inundating to, to figure out wh wh where you want to go. So, 
I'm going to go through a couple case studies throughout this. Okay, uh, Hanan Mojave in my heart, uh, El Griton, uh, Julio Ardita. So this is all open source information, right? This is a, a hacker uh, who broke into some uh, government organizations and colleges in some foreign countries. Um, so he hacked into some other, did some very nasty things, right? So, but bottom line, you know, they, they charged him at the very bottom, three years probation. You know, had to pay some fines. Nothing too big, right? So. Um, but when you look at this, and you're watching this, if you were on that assessment team, right, trying to do the incident response, how would you have handled that? How, how would you have looked at the difficulty of his code, uh, consider the target, what he was going after, what systems he was hitting, where the data points were that he took the data, what, what was the outcome, okay? So did he take your financial information, did he take any kind of logistics, did he take personnel records, PII, whatever you want to call it? Um, what did he take and what does it all mean to you? How much does that damage your day-to-day -day functions, right? Um, and how would you analyze that? Uh, typology is basically typecasting or you know, stereotyping certain groups together, you know, like the naive hacker, um, the organized crime, and I actually have a list of a few uh, slides down. And victimology is basically looking at what servers he hit. You know, actually looking at the victim, the target, and trying to assess, okay, so what was the value of that target that he just went after? Um, and, you know, you can look up the definitions on uh, Wiki. And there are other methods you can use, um, you know, just using standard digital media analysis and trying to do some kind of uh, incident response report, and, um, a, da a damage assessment. But um, attacker characterization is, is very important when you try to do this assessment, right? So attacker characterization has two primary components, events and threats. So what has occurred uh, by the act of the attacker and then the threat, the motives and intent of the attack, right? So um, generally session data isn't available on an attack. You're looking at some, you know, some fuzzed up uh, host logs, you're looking at some network logs, some uh, IDS logs, firewall logs that have more than likely been fuzzed. You know, somebody throws a lot of noise at, at a router or firewall past an IDS and tries to slip by, goes really low and slow and tries to throw really slow fragmented attacks. You know, it, it could be, you know, depending on how, how, um, how important you're, you are as a target. Okay, so HoneyNet technologies, um, if they're available and you use them, you know, and if you don't publish them, okay, so general consensus is that, yeah, everyone's like HoneyNet, you know, bad uh, connotations as well. Um, but if you use them and implement them inside your network and don't advertise them publicly, you can use them, right? Um, it gets kind of shady when you uh, go for prosecutable, um, 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 the p prosecutable path. Work with your corporate attorney on that, but you don't have to. Uh, if you're not going to do prosecution, you just want to do, you know, protection. You can implement honeypots until your, uh, your heart's content. Okay, so these are the common. Uh, when you talk about typology and breaking your threats down into groups, here's a uh, just a, 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 a the, the type of, the, the groups that we use in, internally uh, for uh, analysis team, and um, you see it goes all the way down from uh, naive a novice to foreign intelligence, which you know depending on what kind of information you're protecting, it can go all the way there. Um, Components of an attacker profile that you can start building, and you know, we actually have you know some broken out forms that we use. So when we you know have first hour information, we try to fill all this stuff out. Um, you have motivation, uh, objectives, timelines, resources, risk tolerance, skills and methods, uh, actions, uh, attack organization points. Uh, numbers involved in the attack. You may see one attack, but it could be several people involved in that attack. One person scans, one person actually injects, one person runs the shell, one person gets in and pulls the data, one person cleans up. You, you, that can happen. It could be one person from cradle to grave, soup to nuts, you know. Um, and knowledge source, right? Uh, when I say knowledge source, uh, that again refers to if you're, in, uh, a, a, you can have the ability to find out, you know, an email address, an IP address, a keyword that you can go Google or you know search for on the internet and find out more about that person or that group, and you can figure, out, okay, what are they about? Or do they hate, you know, my company? Is it a former employee? Um, is it you know group working to do, you know, money laundering, or you know they want to sell my information on, you know, IRC, whatever it may be, but and that's a good uh, information source is trying to go out and try to find information about that entity or person. Um, common uh, challenges in attacker attack characterization, the cost. Uh, how do you really effectively you know, 
convey that to your leadership. Hey, you know, we need this amount of money. You know, in addition to just making sure we have day-to-day -day operations going to have you know all this you know it's, you know threat modeling attacker characterization uh, all these extra sensors out and running you know the personnel skilled talent to do analysis on, on the information uh, equipment software productivity you know most you know, most organizations they really they don't want to be inundated with all this you know other you know additional uh, work that you have to do this workload especially IS st uh, staff we have a lot to do on a day to day uh, you know function why are we going to spend this extra, you know, two or three hours doing all this analysis and all this uh, all extra logs? Well, you, you can automate a lot of it. Um, and technology, you know, how do you know where, where to put the equipment? Um, you know, boundary protections, um, the continuity of operations of that equipment. You know, I mean, you have, you know, depending on what kind of guidelines you're operating under, Sarbanes-Oxley, HIPAA. You know, do you have to store that data? Do you have to have extra backups of that? And what happens if that data dies? And you have, you know, disaster recovery. Is your leadership going to let you have a whole other hot site or cold site for that? You know, and legal. Most lawyers get really tense and pucker up when you talk about, you know, setting up, you know, any kind of extra attacker, you know, characterization or kind of profiling systems. Uh, it depends on how you word it. Um, so um, we, we talked a lot. Uh, you know, about implementing the technology, about the concepts of actually performing the work, right? So when you're actually doing the analysis, you want, you want to trace an attack um, to the insertion point. Right? In, in your first hour, when you find out something's happened, you try to find the best, you know, that point of entry, right? And try to trace it back because that first device, like you know, most ISPs, what they dump their data in 24 hours. So you have 24, you know, 48 hours to, to find out where that attack came from before all your data is gone. Um, and, but that data, you know, even though the source IP doesn't mean to, uh, too much, it still helps you understand what might be happening, and you know th how, what, who, when, why, and where. You know, it's it, it's a it's a big piece of the pie. Um, acquiring all of your internal assets. If you run a major enterprise that's across you know, several countries or you know, several states across the country, how do you get all those pieces together really quick you know, before the logs are erased or before something is damaged? Or that attacker, as he's getting out of your network, you, know, you don't have access to Texas, your Texas site, whatever it may be, and they're deleting those logs when you're finding out in your Philadelphia office that, oh, you know, something just happened. So getting all that information together really quick and storing it, then that's, that's really important. Um, you know, Post-mortem is reactive and not proactive. And if you're not put implementing technologies to actively monitor, you know, the, the, the anomalous behavior, you know, you're, you're fighting a never-ending battle. It's completely uphill and you're just going to fall down. Um, data stream cowboy and Kuji. Okay, so 26 days of attacks, 20 days of monitoring. A lot of sniffers. <laughs> um, so look at the overall damage, and that's the damage just to the computer systems. That doesn't cover the cost associated with the time, right? To it took all the personnel to rebuild all those systems, the information lost, as with case study B, right? There's there is a undefined uh, you know monetary <laughs> number with all that that hasn't been, you know ever totaled. Um, if you had looked at that and you were trying to define, you know, who, how bad is this threat? So think you're, you're all on the receiving end of this and you, you find out there's all these sniffers loaded on your network, there's all this data going out of your network, okay, the tools that are running on your network, how, how good is the code? You know, is it very custom? Again, is it open source? Common tools. Would you, how would, who would you consider the target? How would you consider it, right? Um, would you look at what just happened to you and try to figure out, okay, so what does this all mean? Are they taking, like, if I'm building, like, an airplane, are they taking, you know, different pieces of it to, from different sites to all take it back and, you know, build a nice plane for themselves because uh, they're starting up their own airline? Um, would you, could you look at the typology and victimology, put them together and assess the situation? Could you look at, okay, so I think that this information is highly valuable and it could end up on the black market or in another country or, you know, specifically the black market. Um, and look at the, the, your, your target, your victim. What does this all mean to me? Um, what service did it take? Again, you know, what applications, what files, what inf uh, information. So, um, giving you a kind of a light run through of when you see an intrusion, how would you kind of like look at it, right? So you have this information and um, 
of your attacker, and this is what you, this is how uh, what, what I actually use to build, um, you know, profiles of uh, after an intrusion. This is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, gender content analysis. You know, can you see inside the code? Can you look in, on the internet and see what you know if this is a male, female? Can you do research on that? Um, I said on the internet, age, older, yo younger, um, you know, middle-aged. Uh, Command use, keystroke use, if they're using some really old commands, uh, you know, Windows, Unix, you, you can infer that they're older, younger. There's things like that that you can use. Sometimes, you know, people can be aware that you're doing that and throw you off with some, you know, it could be a young person using older commands. They can do things like that. Um, typology, methodology, content analysis, looking actually at the PCAP uh, of the attack, what actually happened in the flows. Uh, Wraith. That race, ethnicity. Um, can you tell if they're from a foreign country? Can you tell if they're local? What region of the country they're from? What part of the world they're from? Um, you can do that. Uh, when I, when I uh, talk about uh, command use and keystroke use, and that's relating to honey nets and honey pots. Um, so. You can also do level of intelligence in schooling. How well educated are they? Uh, is your attacker? And that can also mean uh, you can infer from the level of intelligence in schooling what kind of threat you're up against, right? What kind of who wants to do you harm? Um, whether this person is highly funded and well educated, uh, you really don't find highly, highly, highly educated people doing. Um, I mean, you know, masters, PhDs. I'm referring to uh, doing a lot of uh, um, you know, major hacking. I mean, you find some people doing it, but as far as doing cross organizational uh, intrusions, unless they're highly funded, um, PhDs and masters are normally at work. Uh, political affiliations. You know, are they? Extreme, uh, um, you know, uh, extremist group. Are they with some, you know, environmentalist group? Whatever it may be, there's, you know, you can identify that potentially by going out and doing, you know, res uh, research on the internet, uh, looking at content analysis, uh, you know, what's going on. Um, and external data sources, if you find out that somebody else has been attacked by the same entity, by the same group, you can kind of put your heads together and go, okay, well, we think because our two organizations have these you know, functions that it could be this kind of group coming after both of us. Physical mental health, um, we've all seen the movie Swordfish, right? So, you know, the guy's like, you know, hack into this bank or I'm going to shoot you. Same type of thing, you know. Don't know if you've ever seen that before, but it, it can happen. Um, and uh, you can also see, uh, are they narcissistic? Uh, do they have any kind of, you know, manic depressive bipolar disorders? You know, what other patterns of attack? Um, so you want to construct your assessment. You know, you do your triage of the, of the initial incident, uh, your case overview, and your victimology, and you look at the attack. Uh, history, hotspots, nature of the information targeted, you know, again, victim, victim system functionality, um, vulnerability exploits, is, is there any disclosure history on the internet about that attack or that attacker disclosing the attacks? MO, modus operandi, mode of operations, uh, signature, content, patterns. Can you look at any of that, any attack, and can you correlate it across multiples? Um, utilization of the access. So how often, when they got into your network, did they use it? Did they get in for a few minutes and just back away? Did they get in, and were they so comfortable on your network that they found other user accounts, logged into other user as users, you know, overnight for hours and hours and hours, logged into multiple locations and just took all kinds of data and what you know wove it out of your network. Well, you know, well how do you look at that, right? How how well? And then data transfer technique. Did they just FTP it out? Did they SCP it out? Did they use some kind of encrypted you know channel out? Um, you know, and that can help you infer the skill level uh, and the uh, motive and intent of your attacker. Um, logging alteration, you know, deletion techniques. Did they modify the host um, at all? Did, did they care to cover their tracks or did they not? How brazen were they? That, that you can you know, sort of build this information of, about your attacker, right? It's a little profile. Um, so you analyze session behaviors. Oh, did, did I copy this one? No, I think I did. Uh, okay, so. If there's a uh, session data available, you can look at um, the knowledge of, of that attacker of your environment. System locations, right? System functionalities, if it knew exactly where that server was on that you know, VLAN, 
it knew that that was the mail server. It knew that this was the backup file server. If you have a major enterprise and you know, dozens, and you have your own proprietary naming convention, right? How well were they in your network, and how were that entity uh, before they got in your system? Did they know exactly where to go, or did they have to putz around for a little while and do some you know, net views or whatever uh, to get in the system? Uh, did they know exactly what folders and files without doing any grips or directory searches, right? Um, did they know your personnel and roles? They knew exactly that your vice president was you know in that office in that state. Um, or in that network, um, whether the attack is scripted or not, and how often does the attack or generate typos? So, like, let's say you have a fat finger and you always mess up Q, and you're always having to, you know, backspace and delete that. If you have session analysis or session analysis systems, you can really look at all that data and really build a, a good understanding of your, you know, attacker. Okay, so implementing session analysis, you know, again, honey nets, honey pots. Um, the so the, the, I'm going to show you a few sessions that, that we've collected and they've all been scrubbed, um, but this information uh, uh, has been uh, involved in a couple of things that I've worked on. So um, I don't think you can see this too well, but it's on your CD. I've kind of cleaned up some of the text on the CD. I took out some of the uh, MySQL statements. But um, you basically see the person, you know, IP config, tried to pivot off to another box, and went down systematically and went through, looked at the domain, directory to some tools, TFTP some stuff out, you know, echoed, looking, <laughs> pulling stuff out to a file, right? Outputting all this information from the server to a file, took out the file, renamed some t his tool to a, a nice tool, went down, pinged some other system, did some discovery on some other systems on the network, and knew exactly where to go, was copying some of these files in, right? So, bang. So, how, how often did, did this attacker really dig around and look for a whole bunch of systems, right? This actually happened very fast, over like uh, about a half an hour's time. So, this person, this entity, knew exactly where to go and just testing would make sure s s some systems were up and logged in. But it was very quick, very fast, highly educated, you know, don't know about the resources um, of that entity, but it was very fast, very educated. Um, they knew exactly where to go. Um, so, but you can see that they went down, found some passwords on the local system, and kept digging, burying deeper and deeper in, right? Found some passwords, looked at some more systems, copied over some more files to some other systems. So you can see they're just pulling out the data, pulling it out, pulling it out, right, very fast. So after you look at this, right, and this is actually about six pages printed out uh, of a honeypot capture, um, how would you have analyzed or uh, evaluated the attack, right? You, you can look at the network data, and you can look at the signatures created and kind of put them together, and then say, okay, here's the session data, and match all that up and build a very good profile and understanding of your attacker. Was it sophisticated, motivated, targeted, opportunistic, organized, disorganized, it's a good criminal science uh, uh, term, and then uh, automated or live. Was it scripted? Did somebody prepare all this? If somebody prepared this kind of information, this attack very quickly, you know, they have to have an extreme knowledge, you know, very deep knowledge of, you know, your internal network, your day-to-day -day operations. Okay, honeypot capture uh, two. Okay, so basically the person, this is kind of a, a pudge around on a DMZ. Somebody was looking around for something. Um, so we see that they're just kind of digging around, looking for something. Um, and they're not really doing too much. They're just trying to do some discovery, and it's not that very long of a capture. Um, two and a half, oh, sorry, two and a half pages. So you can see, and um, uh, I will say that I actually messed up on this one. I set up my honeypot and actually left the, uh, in the recent documents link, I left the little cbec.zip file in there. So they discovered it pretty quick. So don't do that. <laughs> um, so they go through and try to dig around the system. Um, dig around for some domains, right? N nothing too fancy, nothing too good, um, but they did try to pull out some data to an external IP, which is fuzzed. Um, and you can see that they tried to make a lot of noise on the network, tried to fill up the IDS logs. So, you know, not too sophisticated. Somebody's poking around for an empty box to, to pivot off of. Um, yeah, you know, like I said, not too sophisticated, motivated, and they, they never came back after that. Um, it wasn't very, it looked like opportunistic, not really targeted, because that IP or that presence really hadn't scanned like that or hit that service on that honeypot before. Um, automated, it, it was live. There was a live person digging around that network. A script wouldn't have you know, made those kind of faux pas like that and made those typos. Um, so session capture three, this is actually much shorter, um, but you can look at it. Somebody's just digging around, looking at a, a domain they just tried to get into. And this was a, uh, a web server domain. And hit a server, tried to look for some uh, 
you know, some documents, recent documents on the uh, the system. Tried to do some other uh, some good queries and made a lot of noise on the network. Um, but it, it wasn't very sophisticated. No. Um, you look around and you know they left after a while. And this right here was about an hour of digging around. Uh, the session capture two was about an hour and a half. Um, so it, it wasn't on. They never came back. They never did anything more with this system. Um, so it wasn't sophisticated. Wasn't very motivated because they never came back. That presence never hit that honeypot again. Um, didn't really seem targeted. They weren't really specific. They were like kind of widely searching. Not they weren't searching for anything specific. Um, it seemed kind of disorganized. They didn't know exactly where they're going, what they're going after, and it was it was live. You know, all the typos. Um, okay, so uh, Carlos Smack Salgado, right? So here's another hacker. Um, you know, ended up with you know large fine, two and a half years in federal prison. You know, made about two hundred thousand dollars in sale of credit cards, right? So if you're an online you know financial company. You know, you, you have threats like this every day. You know, you can go on the internet and IRC underground and find all kinds of credit cards you can buy every day for you know one dollar, ten dollars. Um, so, if if you had been a part of this on, on the, the financial side, trying to figure out you know what was going on in your network, you know, how would you consider the difficulty of what he was doing? Right? Uh, did you all this information was it easily accessible? Maybe, maybe a few security controls in place. Um, would you consider the target? What was he targeting? Okay, credit card information. Very easy. Okay, so this is financially based. You know, is it financially motivated? Um, you consider the outcome. Well, he's walked away with all my credit card information, so you can deduce it. it's probably going to end up on the underground internet. So you can probably get on another box and try to get off on the open internet and try to find your credit cards or any of those numbers out there fishing around. Um, typology, what, what, what type would you have mixed them in uh, of all those common attacker types that I threw out there? Victimology, you know, when you're just doing the assessment on that financial data that was out, you can look at that and, okay, it was, you know, e-processing server, all my credit card data was stolen, you know, what app did he get through? You can put all that information together for your official report. Um, you know, I can't go over all the theory. I mentioned some tools. You know, in, in your toolkit, well, in my toolkit, you know, we use net, uh, network IDSs, host-based IDSs, uh, you know, firewalls, antivirus, router logs, uh, honey pots, and honey nets. Um, you know, host, host base analysis and you know, system event logs. Um, you'd be surprised how many attackers actually forget to, you know, delete certain web logs, certain event logs when they're trying to cover their tracks. Um, in order to catch someone crafty, you need to be crafty, right? So, honeypots and honeynets. How many attackers really expect you to deploy a few honeypots inside your network or outside your network? Not many, right? I mean, I know in the past few years it's gotten more and more prominent and inter interesting technologies. More and people are starting to look for them, but you know, not as many as they used to. And they still don't look for them. I mean, I, I rarely ever see anybody in any honeypot that, that I've helped set up look over their shoulder and try to dig for a honeypot, except for that one time because I was, you know, stupid enough to leave it in the recent documents folder. So, um, security resource lies, and you know, your ability to be able to use it, right? So. Um, you want to make your honeypot look as close to your current environment as possible. Same, you know, host name, naming convention, usernames. You know, give, take some fake data or you know some used data from your network and dump it on that box, right? So when they're doing that directory, you know, uh, grep search. Um, they can find the docs and spreadsheets and PowerPoints and any kind of like recent temporary internet files. Make it look like a little realistic. And that's a huge thing. If an attacker gets on your honeypot and sees nothing, within the first five minutes, they're just going to bounce off and go, there's something not right here because every box on the network has a whole bunch of data in it. So you really have to make it do something. Um, so honeypots, you know, advantages. Um, you can collect a small amount of data for only what hits it, but Everything that comes to it, you can infer is completely malicious or suspicious, right? So, reduces your false positive rates and helps you correlate. Looking through all the, you know, the haystack, all you see is needles in a honey net, right? A honey pot. That's all you see. So you can go, okay, I'm seeing this here, and look across your entire enterprise really quick and go, where else am I seeing this? And you can go back and say, okay, have I seen this a week ago, a month ago, a year ago? If you have logs that long, see how low and slow is this person, right? Catch new attacks, um, works encrypted, IPv6 environments, right? Easily. Um, simple concept requiring minimal resources depending on how you deploy them. Disadvantages, limited field of view, 
and there's a risk. You know, they can if you set it up incorrectly, they can use your honeypot to attack the rest of your systems or other companies or other countries. You know, whatever it may be. Um, and automation isn't perfect, but if you put some resources into it to buy some commercial tools, you know, it, it works out a little better. Okay, so uh, many types available. High interaction honeypots, which are full blown systems, they don't scale too well, uh, but requires a lot of resources, um, a lot of machines, and a lot of data analysis because you're really doing host-based analysis, network analysis on full-blown systems. Uh, low interaction systems, they can scale very, very well, but um, they're a specific purpose, and most of these low interaction honeypots, they don't trick an attacker to actually get in the system. It's just you know for scanning and early warnings of a network. Um, Okay, so here's a few screenshots of actually the the Rue OS, which is the latest uh, 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 version of the uh, 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 iteration of the HoneyNet Honeywall. Um, so you you can see this is all a sample that was pulled off the open uh, off Google Images, um, but basically you can see the attacks, the times, process IDs of, of actually what occurred. You know the directories, what the person is doing. So the, all those keystrokes that I showed you would be in the bottom of this window, and you can easily look at really quick. Okay, so What's going on? What process is he using? Where did he come in? You can look at the information, and this is really great, especially if you write your own signatures, um, which we do a lot of. You can sit there and correlate the time, the event, source IP address, destination, and custom signatures. The signatures related to it, so that builds you a network profile of your attacker. And then you go look at the host base part of it, and even your production systems, not even your honeypots, and you can match up in the event logs with the honeypot session capture and go, okay, so he's doing all these things, or she, or, or that entity is doing these things. Okay, so you can infer that what's going on in your honeypot may be the same over here. And you can try to see the skill and intent. Again, this is another one. Uh, what I want to talk about, you know, a, a person at the bottom of here, you see a delete, 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 right? So that person just kept trying to. So if they have, you know, have a fat finger and keep hitting Q, that, that's also a pattern and a signature that you can put on somebody right there. Um, here's another one. So process. So. You know, most of us have tools. You know, when you do pen testing, um, you you go into a system and you know you have your first few things that you do. You check the environment of the box. You know, you try to set your own uh, environment, set your own shell, however, however you try to play with it. But you always go through some specific services that you want to get to, right? Some commands you kick off, and you can kind of infer that, hey, you know. Honeypot A and Honeypot B, you know, there's some re relation here to how this person behaved, you know, or these two attacks are completely different. You know, these person, you know, different entities, different personalities, different methods, different modes, right? Or you know, you can see if they jump from one to the other. Um, so here you go, some some nerd stuff. I'm gonna start with trans. Sorry. Um, so you can spend more time analyzing attacks and spend more time performing analysis uh, on these uh, intrusions, right? Just don't rebuild your hard drive and keep going. I know, I know most senior leadership they want you to take out that hard drive, rebuild it, smack it back in, and just keep marching on, right? They don't care about what happened. They just want to check that box that they got their annual, you know, assessment and day-to-day -day operations, bring that money in, but you know that's that's not going to keep the threat out, just keep it persistent. Um, you, you can perform yourself victimology and typology on the attacks, which will help you have a better understanding of what you're up against and what kind of protections you need to implement. You build a profile of the incident. Um, you may see crossover. If you build a, uh, um, uh, a, a profile or an incident report with a profile of every in incident that occurs, you can easily one day maybe start correlating some of these events across other events. Um, okay, so these five right here may have been the same group or same person and start correlating that and helping the community better understand what this one hacker group, how they behave and how they act. Um, and use the lessons learned to you know, add stronger policy, to add better signatures to your network, to implement better countermeasures at your, at your weak points, at your soft spots. Um, professional recommendations, you know, create photos, you know, especially if it goes to prosecution, you're definitely going to want photos. Um, you can't decide to create a chain of custody if you already perform any kind of analysis steps on any of your production assets that were hit. Um, think before you act, please. Um, if you're working in prosecuting intrusion, get your lawyer involved, your corporate attorney. Um, you can always, des always describe every detail possible in as much depth as you can. Um, you never know when it'll be important. Um, and you, you never know when you're doing your analysis, when you write down in detail, you get to some other systems, it may pop up like, oh yeah, you know, that was important over here. And then you actually put two and two together and you get five. Um, 
Take more time to study non-cyber based uh, you know, case studies. It helps you relate you know, the, the, the methods and how they were able to find uh, the, the, um, the criminal, you know, how they were able to relate it back. Sometimes you can relate that to you know, I, I, uh, IT security. Document everything. You know. um, in short, uh, attempt to better understand your threats uh, on your network. What may actually uh, be of value to anyone in, uh, that wants to do you harm. Uh, define your assets and valuables. Um, you, know, you can do a whole risk management, uh, uh, risk assessment uh, of your network. Um, study non-cyber uh, base, mention that. And increase your ability to correlate um, with more events across your network, right? So you never know if these two client side hits, these emails, you know, uh, phishing emails, if they were both going to the same entity, the same organization, document everything because it, it can all lead back. Um, when you study more non cyber based uh, case studies, cyber crime, cyber criminals, uh, there's a ton of them on the internet that are published now because there's enough of us that have been caught. Um, serial murders, um, habitual offenders, there's all kinds of data sources on the internet that, that you can learn, uh, that you can research and find out um, you know, some usual habitual methods that these guys are fall, fall prey to. Um, provide, and they help provide an understanding um, of the resources they may, they, they may use when you start looking at an attacker, start looking at the tools that they may be using against you, you can start better understanding um, how they're getting in, what they're doing, and that helps you understand what you need to do to keep them out and what you need to buy. Um, keep up to date on the latest security trends, of course. You're all here. Um, maintain an active record of your environment. Be aware of your network behavior. Know your network, people. Um, I'm not saying that none of you do, but uh, I have you know, consulted two groups who have no idea where this system is, you know, the host name, oh, I, I, I don't know. I think it's on the fifth floor, and it's not even in that city. You know, um, people who don't know, you know, when there's a daily cron job that you know transfers an rsync to another database in another site. Uh, you know, I didn't know that happened. They thought that was you know something going on. You know, just please know your network, and um, that'll help you reduce a lot of problems. Um, I added this uh, last night, or well, some of it, so I wanted to be able to give you all some information to walk away with and do some reading. I mean, this is just some of the books that I have. Um, the Cyber Adversary Characterization is really the only good cyber uh, adversary characterization book out there. It's a lot of fluff. It's a lot of like the Microsoft Press from about eight, ten years ago. Um, but it gives you a good uh, fundamental understanding of some processes that you can uh, use. But, you know, um, and then, you know, the Criminal Science uh, Sciences books. And, you know, um, Always talk to lawyers, you know, talk to law enforcement types. If you're in that type of world, you can reach over and knock on their door, or give them a call and say, hey, I want to learn more about this type of uh, you know, criminal science, this kind of study. Where should I go to go learn? And they can you know, recommend you go to some certain places. Um, Honeynet.org, crimelibrary.com. Very, very good resource for criminal sciences, behavioral pro profiling, offender profiling. Um, very good resource. Um, Wikipedia, of course, and it has you know, several dozen links at, on each page. Um, Dartmouth uh, University, they have a lot of good stuff too. Um, yeah, yeah, here we go. And I'll close this off with some famous dead guy quotes. You can't go anywhere without those these days, right? Um, the first one's very applicable to, I think, most of us who are on the defense side. I think some of us here are really close to the second one as well. All right.